We're, we're going to cast Stevens ago on both of them. Um, <laughs> just because there are, there are no rules anymore. Welcome to Behind the Sins, presented by Cinema Sins. Welcome to Behind the Sins, your weekly look at all things Cinema Sins, TV Sins, and Commercial Sins. I'm your host, Aaron, but not that Aaron, of course. And this week, I'm joined by Cinema Sins writer Daniel Cardozo. Hi. Hello. Uh, Daniel, we were uh, just talking. It's um, kind of like a, that weird. Uh, I was talking about how like last week seemed like such a big episode, and this week like seems normal. And that's kind of like the progression for life right now, right? Like. Um, you know, everybody was rustling, you know, rushing for the holidays and all that. Like I have an anniversary between Christmas and New Year's. So like it was Mm -hmm. like extra, (laughs) you know, but it just feels like we can all kind of like take a, take a breath, relax for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the most part, I mean, I guess I'm I'm still super busy. I have a lot of, (laughs) a lot of writing to do. So (laughs) sure. So I'm not relaxing that much. Uh, well, but but like, like in general, like like the next the next time you have to like plan on seeing family is like I don't know. Like aside from I guess any potential birthdays or whatever, like or special anniversaries or occasion like that, like you don't have to make any big plans until what like Easter maybe. So, yeah, uh, um, my, with my family though, there's actually quite a there's a number of birthdays in uh, the next coming months, so it's, it's like pretty consistent. Like it never really never really drops off. So, and like friends, I've been catching up with a lot more friends uh, than I had been like over the past like couple of years. So there's a lot of the, a lot of those things are coming, coming Do around too. people still have friends after the last couple of years? I mean, like I thought every friendship was destroyed with one thing or another, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as I know, um, <laughs> on my end, I have friends. I don't know how they feel about it. Nice. Uh, well. Uh, on that note, uh, so we can get you back to some of your writing, we'll dive into the Sin Side Scoop for one last time uh, with uh, with me and you together. Um, let's dive into it. What's he building in there? I've got a secret. I've got a secret. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. This is a true story. We'll kick things off with uh, Rick and Morty Season 4, Episode 5, Rattlestar Rick Tacula. Uh, you and Jonathan on this script. What do you think about this episode in general? I did not remember this episode was a thing, and it's kind of most of season four, five, and six for me. The, the funny thing was that I didn't, because uh, I hadn't realized that they had already sinned por- the portion of uh, season four, uh, like before I had joined the team. So, uh, like, I kind of started, I started on uh, episode one with this season, and I did a little uh, experiment to see like what I could get away with. And I, and I, I, I started dropping in a, a little tiny hints that the narrator was a rope was an Android. Uh-huh. <laughs> and in my mind that was going to grow throughout the season. And then oh, halfway through, I was like, I found out that, <laughs> that, season, that everything after season, after, everything after episode five was already done. And then I was just like, well, that's not going to work at all. So did did some rearranging of thoughts and and re- rewrites and just made it work because I was like I need to I need this this to have like a an end or a conclusion <laughs> otherwise it doesn't make any sense. It just accelerated it quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, we will for sure be talking about the medicines in a little bit, but um, I wanted to highlight some of the sins uh, that I thought were uh, were really great in this. Um, I just wanted like first of all like good catch on the fact that the boat is named SS. Uh, yeah, yeah they, I got a good laugh out of that when I <laughs> when I saw that. I, this is a good, clever like joke that Rick and Morty is making, but like it's one of those that like I wouldn't have noticed it. So that's great. Nobody chokes me without consent. Summer would be Fifty Shades of Great at uh, TV Sins. Yeah, um, I, I believe that was Jonathan wrote that one, the Fifty Shades of Great, and uh, it cracked me up. <laughs> <laughs> there's also uh, a bit at the beginning where they're where they're <laughs> i wrote this the racist snake bit just because <laughs> yes uh <laughs> i was laughing at the fa- like just at the like conceptually at, at, a, at a racist snake and then like uh-huh. i was just like kind of seeing where they were going with the joke and uh-huh. then i was like e- yeah so it's like it's funny but it's not funny but it's funny um, <laughs> but i don't actually remember where, where i landed with that as whether or not it was it was a sin or a sin off. But, I think uh, it was a couple of sins and then it ended with like a sin off. And it's definitely possible that it's a thing that we do where we add a sin and or remove a sin and then immediately add one for something else. Yeah. Because that, that tends to happen. 
The other thing I wrote down was uh, that Morty says snowing instead of sewing, uh, which like is a good catch. Like that's typically stuff that is caught or re-recorded or whatever like that especially for animation but i just i just love how how the sin like doesn't really go like doesn't really shame the the voice actor or anything like that it just just says fucking christmas episodes Uh, yes like it's just a good light-hearted joke i thought that was hilarious yeah the edit on that is great like this like the i love the 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 slowdown of the 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 audio and then Uh then the narrator fucking christmas episodes yeah <laughs> what are some of the stuff you had written down uh i think my favorite was uh the show wants me to believe that massachusetts is a phase that all pre-warp civilizations go through and that's mm-hmm. when they're at the snake mit i just thought that that was funny because they just that everything is just just like our planet except for it's with snakes but i don't have anything specific against massachusetts but <laughs> i just like the way that that sounds massachusetts is a phase that somebody somebody has to go through like sort of like a pre adolescence or something <laughs> well you know as the narrator would say that's massachusetts it's is <laughs> <laughs> yes massachusetts it's, it's that's so hard to say yeah the to be fair newscasts involving humans are no more interesting than this and, and it was just like the two newscasters basically hissing at each other and uh, <laughs> It's a little topical comedy right there. Uh-huh. And uh, then we had, no matter how many times I watch this, I continue to see a rocket power a-, a rocket powered alligator that has suffered the loss of two legs, and not a rocket powered snake that has suffered the growth of two arms. Mm-hmm. And that I just like that because that's what it looked like to me. And then the show itself had introduced the idea of suffering the growth of legs. <laughs> or like um, yeah yeah when, yeah because yeah. uh, rick like turns one of the snake he gives him four legs yeah and he's like does anybody else want legs <laughs> yeah so like th- they made that like a like a negative thing so it just it was fun to use that in another sin and then um snake raham lincoln which was uh, i believe a name that jonathan came up with i just uh i just love <laughs> snake raham lincoln i feel like Great. we could do a whole someone should write a whole story about snake raham lincoln hmm I remember this this episode kind of being pretty underwhelming uh, for me because, again, I didn't remember it. And to not remember a Rick and Morty episode is like the cardinal sin, right? Like these episodes are typically super memorable because of some big concept they they bring in or something like that, you know. So, but yeah, Snake or Ham Lincoln, that'd be a fun spinoff, you know. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. There was a kind of joke or theme or narrative that happened where um, Aaron left the narrator bot running and then had to come terminate the narrator bot and start sitting manually again, which Aaron talked about, I think, last uh, last episode, because he was said he said, you like to do this thing where you like to imagine that the the narrator has a machine. Yeah, because that's what I was saying. It, uh, there was a, a, a bit of a slow drip tease at the to the the existence of Narrator Bot it was in episode one of season four and then episode four of season four. I did it again where like basically he, uh, I, I feel like it's like a like a loop or something. He gets kind of stuck in like mm-hmm. a like a vo- vocabulary loop or something and it just can't handle that for whatever reason. I don't know why a robot wouldn't be able to handle that, but like because like, kind of <laughs> like as like a voice break that like is obviously like digital. This was basically the reveal of what that was all about. And that was me creating that conclusion, that summation of what, of what, of why his voice kept doing that for like a couple of, a uh, couple of videos now. Yeah. Sure. So I don't know like when exactly it came to me as an idea, but it just seemed really fun. This sort of imaginative idea that the narrator hasn't been the one sending all the videos that like there's just been this other this other entity there that's mm-hmm. been that's been doing a, a lot and i think that there's like every now and then i'll see like a comment or something just about the number of rick and morty videos that we do sin so i kind of gave a justification in that reveal where he says man he's been watching a lot of rick and morty <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so it's sort of this idea that that the narrator hasn't been the one doing this it's been this other this robot has just been watching rick and morty nonstop and making these sins videos so yeah, Fair. so that yeah. that was fun. So that leads us kind of to the medicine, which I do want to talk. I think more about the medicines in the next episode because that's like there's that's significantly much more a part of that. But they, it does get introduced here. Um, where did this idea of having a medicine start from? Because the the medicine is not a sin on the content itself; it's a sin on reality, right? It's a sin on the narrator. 
Yes, it's a sin on the narrator's reality. So, so what, where was kind of the inception for that idea to introduce that? Well, for one, the amount of meta commentary or the meta comments that Rick and Morty make is probably the main influence for that, or at least why this particular show was like a good time to introduce it. I think that like there's been a lot of different like creators and stuff have been like touching on this idea of like meta ness. Like, like I don't know if you saw was it Inside by Bo Burnham? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he does the whole thing where he is doing a reaction video to himself that just keeps becoming uh-huh. a reaction video over reaction video over reaction video, and like uh-huh. the, it's just like that idea of like this being able to re- to like react to things, and so um, it just became fitting. And the reason that it happened here at the end was we did that whole the whole thing where he, like you revealed it's a robot, and like I don't know if I don't know how many people are like paying that kind of attention to this or, or, or thinking about the sins videos in that kind of way. So it was kind of just a way to explain what was going on. So basically the show kind of gets a medicine at the end for not really doing anything wrong, but just as a, a vessel to explain. That's why he's like, yes, in this episode, I introduced that there's been a, that there's been a robot this entire time. And it's uh-huh. a, like, I guess almost like, a bit of a, like a retcon or, or as you say, changing the, the canon a bit of what of what's going on. So like like that's the reason that it was it was used here. And then around this similar time when this was being written, they had to start on episode seven of season six, which we're going to get to in that. They went wild with that episode, like the Rick and Morty creators and writers that went wild with it. So when I found out I had to write on that one as well, I was like, well, like this is already kind of a weird thing that we've introduced to this universe now. So why not just continue that? Sure. The cool thing was that (laughs) the fact that I was already sort of working on it before we had to do the other episode, it like allowed to think through and brainstorm like what that would look like on screen and like how the, how like that narration would like pop in and like how like the, the sin counter and how it, it would all interact. My goal was to keep it sort of like, the idea of it there, but never, but like not have it need to be on screen for it to be acknowledged. So that's why it kind of pops in and out like uh, the YouTube comments. It's kind of a threat that it could pop up at any moment in any video that we do. <laughs> yeah, I think I feel like that's a good place to end it. We'll uh, we'll definitely return to the medicine when we come back to episode seven of season six. But uh, I did have another question I wanted to ask uh, uh, concerning the season four episode five video, and that's. Did somebody really chug a two liter of red soda and why? <laughs> it wasn't a two liter and it wasn't so much a chug. It was, it was, a, it was, I w- was thirsty <laughs> and, I, and I made a poor choice. Water was the appropriate choice, but sure. it was a bit of hubris. And I, I, I chose uh, a soda I had, had never seen before. And that is... <laughs> Though there was some results, I, I believe someone in the comments did identify which soda it was, but I'm not going to name names because I don't <laughs> want, I don't want to hurt their business because it was it was entirely my fault. It was too hot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like there's only like two kinds of red soda out there, and uh, yeah. I don't think it would take Sherlock Holmes to deduce which one, but sure. No. <laughs> uh, there's been a challenge on TikTok recently of people trying to like chug an entire bottle of Sprite and, mm. uh, and then like without burping. And um, it's, it's just <laughs> hilarious to see their reactions. Cause like nobody can do it. And if they can do it and immediately like this Jurassic roar comes out of them, like it's, quite hilarious to watch well ian has a thing where he he doesn't burp and yeah i, I don't want him to try it i don't want him to hurt himself because like i've <laughs> that, that, might seems hurt, dangerous. Yeah, that might that might hurt him <laughs> that's such a carbonated drink that like he might like implode if that happened uh. <laughs> <laughs> we're turning um. <laughs> turn to a singularity <laughs> <laughs> anything else in this video that you wanted to touch on oh yeah there was just a this is one of the comments or discussions that i thought was funny along the way of like making um writing the script was i wrote us in were about the little rockets on the on the toolbox and in my mind it, it made sense uh because they they didn't they didn't seem to need to be there in if they were functioning to me at that level of thrust i thought that they would the rot the toolbox would fly off into space in my confidence, I, I yeah, I put that in there, and then Dicer came back with with this, 
And his response was, I get nervous about gravity sins. It could be argumentative considering the rockets could be there to stabilize relative motion with an anti-gravity environment. And I was just like, you know, that's a pretty, that's a good argument. <laughs> like that's such a, <laughs> such a good argument. <laughs> and I was like, I still feel like I'm right, but it's like, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Once you start arguing arguing physics and relative motion in a sense video, I was like, maybe we've gone a little bit too far in that we <laughs> yeah, I need, need to take it a step back. With, the laws of with gravity are the villains yeah. of the cinema sins. <laughs> I mean, between this and the Avengers sin video, yeah. So we, we put a we, I just say we put a lot of thought into some of these and a lot a lot more thought than than some people might think. So we'll be starting the uh, gravity sins uh, channel. <laughs> Uh, later this month just as that's a teaser right there. uh asterisk no we won't that would be too much work <laughs> yes <laughs> let's move on to tuesday's video bullet train uh jonathan and you again on this one what do you think about this movie i enjoyed it as far i as action movies go it wasn't my favorite though i mean like it's not something that i would say that I need to really revisit or that uh, I would be putting on any lists, that, but it was a fun movie to watch. And it's funny because after I even spent so much time with the, with the movie, like I still, like, I feel like I liked the characters. I liked, I liked the story. Like I liked a lot of things about it, but there was something that was missing for it, uh, missing from it for me. And I'm, I'm not entirely sure what that was. It felt like there was like an element to it that just didn't bring it over the top for what I thought it could have been as a movie. I think that's a really good way to put it. I think I like the movie more than you do though. Like I just, I'm into this kind of aesthetic and this vibe and this, mm. uh, like this is a really funny movie. I mean, I know that the, the Sims I absolutely video, agree about that. like the Sims video rips on the Thomas, the tank engine stuff a lot, but like that had me like really laughing. And I saw this in theaters with my wife and we both like really enjoyed it. I think, it's like number 11 or 12, my favorite movies of the year so far, which isn't like a high feat. Like there haven't really been a ton of like excellent movies this year, but like I really enjoyed this one. I had a good time and I think you're right. There is something missing from making this like a, like a standout spectacular movie. I mean, I think that it's shot really well and I like a lot of the performances. It may, Maybe it's just that it tries for a little too much and some of the stuff it doesn't really do well. Like it kind of tries to have a heart in the end. And it's just like, that was really never the movie I wanted. Right. Like I wanted bullet train, you know, the promise of this fast paced action chaos, you know, anyway, it's not a perfect movie, but I quite enjoyed it. Speaking of things I quite enjoyed, may, maybe my sin for the week. The, there's a line that says there's a lot of bodies here. And then Jeremy just starts whispering, let the bodies hit the train. That just slayed me. I, I really wish that would have considered and he would have just gone with the next line where he just screamed. You know. Yeah, <laughs> that killed me. What are some of the things that you liked from this video? What are some of the ones you wanted to point out? I had the other singing one where uh, Lemon or Lime, I forget, uh, Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson uh, says, how about a wagon wheel? And then uh, another same thing. Jeremy starts singing wagon wheel. <laughs> Sings like the first. He says, you He's like strange request, but okay. And then he starts just goes into it. So that, that was that was really funny. Um, there's the the sequence couldn't be ripping off Kill Bill more if it someone had actually said, "Hey, we should go Kill Bill now." Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that'd be rolling. And then um, I really loved the, uh, Jeremy's delivery on uh, the "say yes to the vest" uh, sin because there was a, a bit of a thing in the movie where it's like he says he doesn't wear he he doesn't wear bulletproof vest because it gives you a false sense of, of security and mm -hmm. then it turns out he was wearing a vest later and like I just just thought that it was like there was a weird no just a fun opportunity there to to do that and that's a that's a play on uh a, it's a TV show that I have actually never seen but I've heard of called Say Yes to the Dress which is uh, about selecting a wedding dress so it's like yeah. it's like will he or won't he wear a bulletproof vest <laughs> yeah, so. i love it uh i so badly want like a cutaway now of of lemon trying on different vests and having and having his friends around him and they have to like agree yeah that one fits you the best <laughs> and that would even fit the, the the his character in that in the movie actually it would, like, that whole it scene. Would. <laughs> that's great Let's see. I, I know I gripe about the lack of workers on this train, but why do we not get a flashback about this and other important things, which was just a really great like 
cumulative sin because there's so many flashbacks in this movie and the narrator makes sure to point them out all the time. <laughs> so, there's so many flashbacks. <laughs> there's also like a mini bonus round of every time that Zazie Beach says bitch, which is frequently. Um, Tom Cruise was a stand in for the water bottle in this <laughs> scene. I just I love the Tom Cruise uh, stand in scenes there. They will kill me every time. And then uh, again, probably another contender for sins, sin of the week. But this was uh, did these trains flip a coin to see which one gets flipped over the other? Because that's the Thomas the Tank Engine episode I want to see. This is me with a lot. We had a, a bit of a discussion just about fate and like how much fate is a uh, is almost a character in this movie. Uh-huh. And like. I, I like it conceptually, but like it also feels like a bit of a cheat in the in the film because it's sort of like it's sort of used as and anything is is possible here because it was like meant to happen and mm. and so we we did have a, a discussion about that on a few of, of uh, quite a few of the sins and, and that led to some rewrites but because like yeah because I mean the whole movie is like a, a this works and like we could have said that. Yep. 100 times and, and it would have all been relevant but like they did kind of write it in there so it's like it's still sin worthy but it's like we wanted to acknowledge that that we under look we understand what the movie's doing with that then like yeah so that that was a interesting bit i more so interpreted it as um the i mean this is the same director as deadpool 2 um and mm-hmm. so there's that zazzy beast character um where domino where she her superpowers luck and they just kind of like have some fun with that. It's 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 a it's a joke. Obviously, these things don't work out that way, but it's just kind of like a, a wink and a nod at the way things work out. And like, I feel like Brad Pitt's character is kind of like the a, a different version of that, right? Like a, a little bit more like yeah, less aware version of that. So I felt like it was just kind of in the same vein. But yeah, certainly, certainly plays a role. Logan Lerman is more than a Percy. He's in other movies like The Person Being the Wallflower and Fury. Wait, did I just use Fury in a positive way? Does one of you hate Fury? Uh, no. <laughs> That's the short answer. Uh, no, actually. Uh, I did see Fury. I did not hate it. I don't remember it a whole lot. I, I might have to revisit it. But Jonathan wrote that, and uh, he hadn't seen Fury. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the used Jonathan it. thing to do. Yeah. Oh. And- <laughs> it just really annoyed me because on the other podcast that I run, like somebody else had just said that they hated Fury. And I was like, literally nobody ever knew it's hated Fury. And then you come along like and then now I'm just it's getting double teamed. And I'm like, look, at, I, I really like the movie. It's not like one of my favorites of all time. But I'm like, that's a good movie. I should have asked him more about that, like like in the, in the writing process. But like, he has such a library of knowledge that. I just trusted him. I was like, I was like, he, he saw it and he, he w- was not a fan. So I just like, let it go. But it, I mean, it still works as a sin. And <laughs> it does because the narrator is not supposed to like movies. Right. And, and fury has been sinned before. So I asked him, um, uh, like directly about that. And I, I also enjoyed his response, which was, uh, I just thought out of the ones mentioned, it would be the one to hate on. <laughs> <laughs> and I, mean, I just enjoyed the, the matter of fact so it's good. I like Fury more than Perks of Being a Wallflower but uh, yeah I actually haven't seen I haven't seen Perks of Being a Wallflower so I'm kind of out on that one it's it's good right but it was one of those that I came to it late and people are like oh this is incredible like one of the best like movies kind of about and really for young people and I'm like I'm a young person and watch I'm like it's fine like <laughs> It's good. It's got good performances and it's fine. You know, <laughs> anything else about this video that you wanted to touch on? Just the fact that I tried to add uh, 10,000 sins to it for all the flashbacks. <laughs> and uh, Ian's response was just, uh, oof, that feels like a lot, maybe. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I'll bring it down to a thousand, but <laughs> but I won't negotiate any further. <laughs> nice. Uh all right, so we'll move on to Wednesday's video. Rick and Morty 6x7. Uh, this is full meta Jack Rick. Back on the new, like, this is the, like, new run of Rick and Morty. Uh, the, like, continuation of season six after they took a couple week hiatus. So, you you and Jonathan again on this one. Yes. This is a very, very Daniel and Jonathan week. 
Let's see. Uh, the first thing I wrote was the medicine counter lives. I honestly expected that to be a one-off from the first ep- from the first one, and uh, we'll dive into it at the end because um, I want to cover the rest of the uh, the video first. But um, kind of a lot of this video revolves around like the medicine jokes and kind of the like the narrator's self awareness. So yeah, uh, so as alluded to earlier, Morty would be the most meta thing to ever meta at medicines. And if Rick and Morty continues down this path, we might just create a channel to fuck with them personally. And then as it says that there's an asterisk that appears that says no we won't. no we won't. That's far too much fucking work. Uh, <laughs> which I just love because like a lot of times like there's the threat by cinema sins that it's like I will give all the sins back, but like there's never been an asterisk that appeared that's like you know <laughs> no we won't. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's great. Uh, <laughs> is this just a bunch of groan inducing wordplay for seven TV critics that won't even enjoy it? It's really does feel like a specific call out and uh the the narrator seems to go into it like uh a lot and then like i think it ends with like narrator really wants to be recognized in a rick and morty episode cliche or something like that uh yes it was just fun um and then because then the late later there was like the the sin where it's like uh or how the bowl of fruit was always on the top shelf or like <laughs> yeah uh what are the things you wanted to point out the use of that potato salad clip i thought uh uh-huh. that <laughs> That made me laugh every time, and I was just like, uh-huh. part of me was like, I don't know what we're doing anymore. <laughs> we've left reality, but but it was funny. It was it was so funny, especially so, the one at the was, end. The one at the yeah. end really killed me. <laughs> what is that, that a clip great. from? I believe that was Seinfeld. Oh, I don't, I'm not a Seinfeld person, so yeah, I, I never really got into it in uh, so much either. So um, I don't know a whole lot of the Seinfeld universe. I don't need the context to know that that was hilarious every time it happened. So, yes. Well, with this, I have to say, with this video, I love the voice of uh, Narrator Bot that came out of. Uh, I realized that having Aaron talk to himself back and forth might get confusing. So mm-hmm. we we had the 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 voice cracking thing that kept happening in the other uh, in the other season. So the Android's still broken, basically. Narrator Bot's still broken, and the voice has never been fixed. So. That's why it's uh it's all digital like that, and it worked out really well. Especially that, like there's a few things I think there was one delivery where he where he's just like holy shit, <laughs> and I just love the way <laughs> <laughs> I love the way that sounded coming out of a robot voice. Uh-huh. Uh, speaking of voices, uh, Jeremy comes back because uh, the narrator is like you know um, all these people that are like you know this guy you know why is this guy here and still asking for the other guy to be back and whatnot. So Jeremy pops in for a little bit. And he's like, no, no, you're doing a good job. It's all good. And just affirming him. And then still manages to send the Dark Knight Rises as he's there, which is, is just great to me. And the yeah. thing with that that people might not realize is that uh, this episode is sort of the, a, the this episode of Rick and Morty is sort of a sequel to the Story Train uh, uh-huh. episode. And that, I believe, was the first episode that where they switched uh narrators yeah i think the video points that out but that was not something that i had known because I, I haven't seen this episode yet i just did start watching season six but i just hadn't gotten around to this one yet because letter kenny came back on so priorities priorities yep. priorities i just like when they kill jesus the sin counter goes up to 666 it's just like you know how many sins are we supposed to give you for killing jesus oh okay the Loch Ness monster appearing as the new David S. Pumpkins, and then he's like, "Wait, are we supposed to like that?" And then uh, he's like, "I don't know anymore." But you know, just last week I had this conversation. I said, "If this happens, then I will shave all my ball hair and take up crocheting." And then you hear the razor sound boot up. Really funny to me. And the, the last one I had written down was the uh, TV sins guy would be excellent at letting other people do his job. Perfect medicine. And because we always do the uh, so and so would be. Excellent at TV sins. So yep. narrator deserves to be sinned for letting other people do his job. Yep. Uh, well, that's the only sins that I had written down. And for, for the like behind the sins portion of this video, I just figured like if there was like anything that you wanted to mention about the, the process of like using the medicine as a full blown thing here. Um, uh, to, to be tidy with the, the whole concept, the, 
narrator bot gets revealed in that uh, in that during that video and then at the end we we introduce the medicine in which the narrator just explains what happened in that video and um which now that i'm thinking about it, i feel like if we probably should have given ourselves like an exposition and um some kind of <laughs> sin exposition uh, for over explaining <laughs> but that would add another medicine and i feel like i feel like the i feel like the video kind of like concluded the medicines and the narrator bots time b plot story arc i don't know um <laughs> like i feel like i feel like the you know that ending there kind of like concluded that so if you were to send yourself for exposition and explaining then that would defeat the purpose because then you would have to send yourself which would have to be a medicine I don't know if I understand it anymore because <laughs> there's there's too many layers too. and uh, I had spent I spent too much time thinking about it. So. Well, let's move on to Thursday's video then. Uh, Speed two, Chris and Jeremy writing on this one. This is the original Cinema Sins crew. Have you seen this movie, Daniel? Yes, I have. There's no reason to watch this movie, is there? I believe as a part of cinema history. <laughs> Maybe in an academic sense. Um, see, it's not a like. I don't. I didn't enjoy it. I'm not going to say I, that I really enjoyed the movie, but you get Willem Dafoe. If nothing, if nothing else, you get sure, you get some sure. some top notch Willem Willem Dafoe acting. And so, I wouldn't say say that you need to put it high on your priority list. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't say don't watch it completely. Uh, the the only reason you might want to watch this movie is Willem Dafoe's performance. Yeah. This is a... And to understand the Sins video better. <laughs> sure. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only reason... This is... Uh, the only reason to watch this movie also would be a... Uh, a perfect example of, like, where movies go bad. Because, like, if this is a total offshoot of speed... Like, not, not even speed 2, if it's just called cruise control or whatever uh and doesn't have any shared characters like if the sandra bullock's just a completely original character like this movie still is a terrible movie but with a great villain performance but but the fact that they call it speed 2 is just a cash grab they couldn't get keanu back sandra bullock is a completely different character from the first movie even though you know she shares the same name and is supposed to be the same person you know Jason Patrick is nowhere near as as good as a leading man as Keanu. The whole concept of speed was that it had to be high stakes and high speed, and you just don't get that on a cruise. Like, <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't have those moments, those like the adrenaline moments from the first first film when when like the actual speed of the bus be becomes like a, a component, a visceral component of it, like something you can feel. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah, well, in the first look, the first speed is an all timer, but this uh, I watched this when I was a kid, probably like twenty years ago. Yeah, I would have been seven or eight. Um, eh, no, maybe like ten or twelve. So fifteen years ago, and uh, just because I loved the first speed, and I think like we had this because we had a lot of movies, and I popped it in one day, and I'm just like, what? like, there's literally nothing about this movie to like, and it, except for Willem Dafoe who I had already known as the Green Goblin. So I was like, but I could just watch him be the Green Goblin. That's all he's, you know, I think the Sin <laughs> video point out, this is essentially an yeah. audition tape for him, you know? Yeah. So. <laughs> I, know. I propose one thing is that, because it, it shouldn't be speed, but like, what if they did something different with it? And like, because it's a big boat, what if they did like, they named it mass times acceleration or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I have an idea. How about what if we take this movie and we make it better, and then we just call it <laughs> Under Siege? Uh -huh. I think we could do that because Under again, the Sins video points out like we already have, you know, we already have Die Hard, and there's Die Hard on a boat and Die Hard on a plane, and or or Die Hard on a plane and Die Hard on a bus and all that. And it's like, what if we do Die Hard on a boat? And they failed to realize that Under Siege came out five years earlier. Like, uh, yeah. I mean, it would have been probably a, a good Under Siege 2, maybe, if there was a way to roll that in there. I mean, I know that there is Under Siege 2, which is on a train, which would have been a better place for Speed 2. Here we go. So so we're going to rewrite history. We're going to flop Speed 2, the plot for Speed 2 and Under Siege 2. We're going to switch those movies to the different franchises. 
Yes. There we go. All right. I think that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> okay. Uh, but we're still going to keep Steven Seagal in 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 in, in the the train one. <laughs> We're going to cast Steven Seagal on both of them. Um, <laughs> just because there are there are no rules anymore. It's the 90s. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares about continuity. We're going to, we're going to cast Steven Seagal as, as Keanu Reeves' character from Speed. We're not even going to change his, his name. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to acknowledge it's a different person. It's going to be good. I love it. Uh, under the sins in the video, Sandra Bullock is not a dog. You do not give commands to Sandra Bullock hilarious god i hope i sure hope the passengers got some more dry towels and then the the concierge guy says here's some more dry towels and he says thank god thank god oh that killed me Uh, um (laughs) and then there's the willem dafoe performance that we've already talked about and it says here's a sin for making me think of taking a sin off of speed too yeah um i have a couple more written down but what are some of the ones that you uh that you wrote down I enjoyed the uh, mathematicians are walking out of the theater right now. with shame they ever walked in in the first place. <laughs> I, just, I just thought that was a interesting. <laughs> we brought mathematicians into this and they're disappointed. And then, then, then there was uh, this movie is like Treme only without social commentary or a reason to exist. I just love that the the way they just snuck in that that re- the reason to exist at the end. Yep. Uh, let's see. Maurice takes these diamonds, and I'm okay with that. And I'm not okay with that. Um. Yeah. <laughs> not okay. Oh, yeah. So I'm not okay with myself being okay with that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Budgeting for a CGI anchor, but not budgeting enough. Uh, and then there's the there's the moment where the cruise crashes into the dock, and the, and then the guy just goes, "My car!" And then there's a just an insert of a st- obvious like studio laugh track perfectly summarized i think everybody's experience watching uh and then how could this happen on my honeymoon what a fucking stupid question this is like asking why that murder happened during my bar mitzvah or why fire got firefly got canceled while i was at football practice um, <laughs> yeah that was a weird that was a weird line i don't know it's so stupid uh you were saying chris had some things to say he had also gave some of his favorite things to pick on which is uh, sort of in the same area he had um Annie and Alex watching uh, Lolita in their room. <laughs> yeah. Uh, every breath you take is used as a romantic song <laughs> in a movie, and even though it's a <laughs> it's it's a more of a creepy song. Yep. And then there's the movie cutting away to mus- musical ar- artist UB40. <laughs> <laughs> he say, let me see what he says music movie cutting away to musical artists like ub40 as it searches desperately to end the terrible first act yeah yep. i really enjoyed those things and then the movie trying to get us to care about jason patrick's awful character by having him know asl and communicating with a deaf girl named drew they put drew in danger for a whole bunch of the movie and it's incredibly ham-handed and uh uh, Chris says that he enjoyed writing the I'm out of fuck sin mm-hmm. and including the union drivers responsible for the delivering the fucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said there's too much to cover, but those were those highlights. Sure. Yeah. Everything about this movie is just bad, but uh, I quite enjoyed the Sims video for this. I thought it was a much better experience than watching the movie. You have anything else before we move on? I do have some uh, behind the scenes uh, uh, verbiage from Chris as well. He said that he remembers when Speed 2 came out and he remembers it being bad, but not 3.9 on IMDb bad. The low light of this movie is the first 30 minutes and it never recovers. Jason Patrick replaces Keanu Reeves and it starts with a totally unbelievable action scene where Patrick is chasing down a bad guy in the same area where Sandra Bullock is taking a driving test. And this is where she finds out Patrick is a cop who puts himself in danger every day and has been lying to her for about seven months. So that's okay, though, because he bought cruise tickets for their very <laughs> important seven month anniversary. That's like that's also something that was so baffling about the movie that I'm so happy that the Sins video just hammered because like the seven month anniversary isn't a real anniversary and definitely not something that you buy cruise tickets for, you know? No. No. <laughs> and how easy would it to be to write in, you know, instead of seven months, how about a year anniversary or two years or, you know, happy, you know, Merry Christmas. We live in California. Like, <laughs> um, 
you know, like it, so many different ways that they could do that with seven months is just stupid. <laughs> <sighs> On to Friday's video, uh, the commercial sins Hilton for the stay. This was uh, a really, really, really fun one to watch because um, it seemed like every sin took like 30 seconds. Like they were all just paragraph long sins and like the tone of um, like Chris's narration voice like seemed to match what the commercial like tone was and so it kind of starts off like gloomy and boring and like you just hate it um and then it gets to the hilton and it kind of like becomes that normal again you know ha happy chris right i was just say with the the tone of that especially like the opening one i think that like the the tone that he he used with the very first and kind of set it set it up really really well um I, like i gave him some like some directions but not really the told them to do whatever like felt right for the sin because it was just so it was so long and i was just like felt like when i first wrote it it was meant to be more angry but it just felt like i was like i don't think that you can't be that angry for that long i was like it's just gonna get tired <laughs> trying to trying to read that so i just said the narrator should be getting more and more distraught as it progresses uh this could be anger or sadness whatever feels right and what he did like worked so worked so well in that when I was wa watching it back in the edit, I was like, it works really w well. And then I feel like it almost needs something else. So then this, uh, because I was talking about uh, Windows updates, I grabbed the um, the Starfield, <laughs> Microsoft uh, Starfield screensaver, and it just kind of uh -huh. kind of fades out into this void of the screensaver. Uh -huh. and then, yeah. So and then it snap snaps back at the end there, which is I thought was really funny. Uh, well, and I like how in the middle of that thread, there was like, oh, holy crap. Is that the guy from, yeah. is that Glenn from Accepted? Um, which is a great reference that I love because that's, I love Accepted. And I know it's not a good movie, but it's hilarious. So, yeah. I remember, I remember enjoying that as well. I mean, this is, it came out it's a funny. while ago, but it was an enjoyable film. Yeah. J Justin Long is funny in it. It's, a, it's an early um, Jonah Hill performance. He's, yeah, that's a funny movie. Yeah, and then and then also later referencing him at you know in Harold and Kumar go to Guantanamo escape from Guantanamo Bay, and then also referencing his character in Hot Tub Time Machine too, uh, which that movie is terrible. <laughs> I like I, I like the know. Harold and Kumar ones so. But it's one of those things where like they they have a an like an 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 actor that you recognize playing supposed to be like a normal person in in this commercial, but it's like you but like you recognize them, so it's like there you're already there's no suspension of disbelief within within this film at least i mean the film within this commercial at least for me so the it just made sense to keep just bringing up all the things that that i'd had seen them seen the actor in so sure yeah he is kind of one of those like that guys right i didn't recognize him like as glenn from accepted um until like halfway through the video because like you really get a good look at his face so i was like good catch and then I don't remember him from anything else. So, and I, like I said, I really like the Harold and Kumar movies, but uh, also there's a, there, it's part of a longer sin, but it, essentially it's, you know, playing beat star while we drop a beat from our starfish was, <laughs> that's one of those chef's kiss sins, which is also gross considering the context. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you pointed it out. Yeah. No, cause, well, <laughs> yeah, cause there's the, cause it's, it's about the sin is about how there's a, um, a phone, like right next to the toilet and the sin is that like some hotels actually have this and you know why would you never use you know why would you ever use this and talk about the fecal matter everywhere disgusting it's true yeah. i feel like i that, that one was uh just like my personal plea for anyone out there to just never pick up that phone in the bathroom at the hotel even if i was staying at that hotel and i was in the bathroom somebody had clearly kicked down my door I'm not reaching for that phone to call the cops. Like, and, and if and if my phone is in the other room, which why would anybody not take their phone to the bathroom with them? Whatever. If for some reason, if my phone is in the other room, I'm not touching that bathroom phone even to call the cops and save my life. You know, um, well, I mean, at that point, I'll I think die. that <laughs> I don't know if a phone call is, <laughs> is really what you should be making at that point. If someone's <laughs> kicked in your door. <laughs> <laughs> so you're yeah. right you're right but i don't know if you're right for the right reason there and i'm sorry <laughs> point being <laughs> no circumstance can make me touch that phone 
I would rather die than touch a bathroom phone, hotel bathroom phone. And then I refuse to suspend my disbelief that Carl hadn't been murdered prior to this moment in his life. Uh, That was the moment where he asked for mayonnaise for his fish. I agree. (laughs) You have anything else to add about this video? Somewhere along the way, like the, I decided that I created a fictional character for the narrator for the commercial. And the only, the only hint is actually in the the subtitles. It says the ghost of Millie B. Hilton. Uh huh. <laughs> it was not a person. I just made them up. I Googled it because I'm like, what is this? What is this story? And I couldn't find anything. And then, so, <laughs> and that's why I said it's a completely fictional backstory. <laughs> about, about, about yeah. Um, <laughs> That's so yeah, yeah, that that started earlier in the in the in the writing process, and then I got to the end there, and I was like, I don't, I have no idea how to what to do with this this final line, and then I was like, all right, I'm just gonna explain what I did, and then somehow connect it to Hotel California. <laughs> uh yeah, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> I just I thought there was a reference to something that I just missed. Ghost of Millie B. Hilton. What? Like, and I searched Millie B. Hilton, and Millie Bobby Brown came up, and I'm like, what? Uh, no. <laughs> that's not. That's not the person. No. No. no, no, no. Well, that'll do it for the inside scoop. Um, lots of good uh, notes and and laughs to be had there. Uh, we'll move on to behind the sitter. So tell me about yourself. We are all sinners. Every one of us. And what happens to sinners? Get to know each other better, you know? See, Daddy? Sinners have soul, too. The information! It's too much! Walk away, March. Just walk away. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and ask everybody about their thoughts uh, and their input and any, like, fun facts that they might have about the Everything Everywhere All at Once video because as we kind of left the conversation last week, like, there is still things to be discovered and I'm sure there are still stories to be told. So, uh, with, with such a massive undertaking and with everybody having a part in it um i wanted uh to to ask everybody about their experience with the video so first question i guess i'll just throw it all out there and you can kind of talk to whatever you'd like but um do you have any anything that you wanted people to know in regards to the making and release uh, of the video um what input did you have into the final video um specifically um and i don't mean that in terms of like like we know where you're narrating but i mean yeah. like Did you have like anything where it's like, hey, like maybe this would be better to do this way or for this narration, you know, read it this way or whatever. I don't know, like anything during the edit process or whatever. Um, Or since this was such a long script writing process, if at any point you threw out an idea that stuck or that didn't Mm. stick. No, I was completely on the outside of this one. Uh, I uh, was broadened after the writing process to do the for like my part uh, but that's kind of where it started for for me I, I mean I knew it was on the schedule I didn't know where they where they were at so um, in terms of what everything I brought to it was involving a, a broomstick <laughs> <laughs> which I did get uh, a DM uh, from Obina Onij who wanted to know how did you come up with the voice for that one? Uh, and then for that specific channel, the broom sins. And then um, just if you had thoughts on uh, the, the last sin as Dicer, like mentioned kind of starts um, and, and shows all, all the current sins team um, in, in order of where they came on. Like what, uh, if you had anything extra to throw into that. So the, the note that I received for the, uh, for the broom sin was narrate as a broomstick. <laughs> so it really left that one up to me creatively uh and, and uh, so there is some there are some different versions of 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 that line that that, that i had tried out a, a lot of a lot of weird things uh it i have to say from doing that that one little bit of narration i have to give so much credit to to our other narrators, to uh, Jeremy, Chris, and Aaron, because uh, like doing that one and hearing it, hearing my voice back was like a nerve wracking experience. I was like, oh, oh my, oh wow. <laughs> well, especially not narrating as Daniel, but narrating as yeah. Broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I think yeah. At at some point, I just settled on that this is is a very proper Broomstick. Is very. Uh, I think it was just from like the line because he said that he was. Uh, I think a bit offended or, or something, and it was just 
churned into to a very sort of like monotone sort of give this like was it like three Flat out of five <laughs> yes I, I have to it's been it's been a minute uh but um yeah so that's that's kind of where the voice that's where the voice came from i gave him put on the 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 uh, like the font and like the the thwax was uh because I was just like what would uh I don't know what it, in in a broom universe what what would be their what would be their their sins, sin yeah. yeah and then the the font I just felt like it should be a little bit uh, playful because it is a pinata it, like there are pinatas <laughs> involved yeah. so it should just should be a bit playful I didn't know that it was going to there was going to be a, a visual broomstick. Uh, present. <laughs> I was curious about how that was going to work out, and then when when the, they came back with the graphics, I was like, "That okay, that makes sense." <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. So, yeah. Um, other than that, there's like there was the um, the the medicine also made it in there. I want to find the exact time that the like where like where that one originated from, but. Um, because I was, I guess, working on the the Rick and Morty stuff around the same time, so like that that conceptually was like was like in the air, yeah. So it was it, it ended up being introduced in everything everywhere once, and then like yeah, it, yeah. You, like we we started seeing it more and more. But it was just fun, it, like because like the the writing of that was sort of happening in in two different two different parts. So like there wasn't really any. There wasn't a whole lot of crossover conceptually there, so but the but I love that that was included as well. Um, yeah, I will say that in terms of the recording of the narration, I had a fun time with that. Like trying to get the audio quality, uh, I ended up hanging a bunch of comforters in a closet and then <laughs> kind of going in there and closing the door with my microphone because I like listening back. It, like it, it's not as bad with like the podcasting, but like when I was just like hearing the the isolated audio like you like there was like something going on outside my house that was like kind of like bleeding through so i just wanted to kind of get that out so I, I ended up in a it was an uncomfortable space but it but like the the quality of it i i was uh very happy with especially with the as the last one where they were blending other audio like i felt like i was worried that if there was something weird in the audio that like it would be very obvious as you like tried to blend it ac- across with other with other people's audio and like that was a, probably the most difficult one to do because we did the i did like the whole final sin and then yep. they were able to cut it together but it, yeah so like that was the one where i kept like i did that one as myself and i kept hearing myself <laughs> it is broomstick i could get away with as being like well you know i'm not really a broomstick but it's like this is myself and like it's like so i wanted it to to sound good and not like and not like I was reading, which was hard. It was harder to get than I than I thought because I've never like read a script or performed a script before. So like getting it to be <laughs> sound not like like I imagine like, like elementary school, like when you're like reading from the textbook and you get that kind of like everyone gets that like <laughs> sort of a monotone voice where they're like just it's, you can tell it's they're reading bands and bridesmaids speeches yeah like you can tell exactly. the people that are reading from a paper i mean you can see them and you can tell the people that are like you know i have notes on my phone of the things that i made sure i want to say but like it's it makes a world of difference yes absolutely so. it's such a fun video and like everyone here had a great time uh making it we consider it a win <laughs> like over and over again sure well, um, I'd like to move on to a g- quick game of Three Sins and a Lie. I have four options for you. Ad Astra, Battle Los Angeles, Titanic, or Morbius. Do Ad Astra. Ad Astra. Okay. <clears throat> this will be interesting. Okay. <laughs> so the way the game works is I'll read four sins. Uh, one, Three of them are in the video. One is one that Joseph made up. Uh, Joseph comes up with all this here. So uh, it's all from him. I just get to read it to you. Uh, Sin number one. I'd give all the sins back if during this scene, the light hit Clifford's face and we find out that he's actually been dead this whole time and that Roy has been hallucinating about his father's mummified corpse talking to him. This is crazy to me because I've not seen this movie or the (laughs) Sins video. So this is... It's it's on my watch list, and I want to watch the movie before the Sins video. So, 
Anyway, that's what a statement. Okay. Um, <laughs> so that's it. Sin number two. It's weird watching a pilot land a rocket on a planetary surface now that we've actually seen SpaceX do it dozens of times without a pilot. This movie may have been made after its time somehow. Um, sin number three would be uh, he gets rescued as a space hero instead of arrested for mutiny and the deaths of several astronauts. Uh, sin number four is he says this while remembering his wife leaving him and yet he passes the test in quotes, uh, which suggests the test is not real, not about passing, judged by the taker and no one else. I'm just saying he's clearly not focused on the essential to the exclusion of all else because he's thinking about his lady love lost. Yeah, so those are the four sins. Uh, which one of those do you think that Joseph made up? I'm really bad at this game. <laughs> Explain that uh, right off the bat. Um, it's a tough game. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the, the the last one. I'm gonna say the last one was fabricated. The uh, the the or, the him not passing the test really. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the correct answer, the actual non sin, is the first. Wow. <laughs> Man, that's a tough one. That was even tough to read. If, if I were competing, I would get all of these wrong every time. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. If you're playing along at home, keep track for yourself. All that. But uh, that's fun. Well, that'll do it for that. Uh, we just have one more thing before we wrap up. Uh, we'll move on to Beyond the Sins. To infinity and beyond. Somewhere beyond my wild history. To boldly go where no man has gone before. Daniel, what is that one thing in any area of pop culture that you really wanted to uh, recommend, warn, or record? I'm going to go with uh, the show 1899 on Netflix. Mm, this is a uh, Yellowstone prequel, right? Uh, no. Oh, no, actually no, no, no. not. There's a, the, <laughs> there's some, there's multiple um, like year shows that, yeah. that are just <laughs> these years. Yeah. Um, you you said this one is 1899. Yes. Oh, this just got canceled. Um. Oh, great. <laughs> I heard it has a doozy of an ending too. So <laughs> I I did not even I did not know, know that. Uh I did not uh, yes, yeah. yesterday, I think. Wow. Well, I I have one episode left. So I hope that it wraps up in a way that I find I'm, satisfying. Otherwise, I'm ruining everything for you. I'm otherwise, sorry. I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back and I'm going to rescind my uh recommendation. Yeah. But I, I heard, enjoyed it. I heard it, it had a really like mind bending one but yeah i got canceled three days ago as of recording this i believe it's the same creator that did dark i don't know if you saw that that show that was also on netflix it was a, a german language i'd heard of it i'd never seen that one but they're both but uh yeah both i i, I recommend i like the uh i like the creative team behind both and so um i so far i'd recommend the first season of 1899 it's lo it's a little bit slow in the beginning, but it picks up and it's nice. Sure, I, I've heard great things about this show. So, I, I the the IMDb score is really good for it. The um uh like general fans seem to like it. The review we published for Sif Pop was really positive. Yeah, like it's got good scores everywhere, but just Netflix doesn't like to keep anything anymore. So, yeah, just any uh. So you're not alone in liking it, even though you haven't seen how it ends. One of the things, because I, I just did a quick search on it, one of the things that comes up <laughs> as a search is, is 1899 based on a true story? And like, that is a wild question. <laughs> if you watch the show, like that's... A... <laughs> well, this is like something to do with the Bermuda Triangle, right? Like... Uh, I don't know. I don't know yet. <laughs> oh, I just, the the art, the art like shows... There's something, There's there are triangles involved. There are, okay. yeah. I just assumed it was a fictionalized Bermuda Triangle thing. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. <Yeah. laughs> uh, I'm also going to talk about a show. I, I mentioned it earlier, but I just, I love Letterkenny. I think it's one of the best comedy shows out there. It's, there's now 11 seasons out, but each season is only six episodes. So like, it's a really easy binge. It's not like, you know, 11 seasons of, you know, even like it's always sunny in Philadelphia has like 16 seasons, but they're like 13 episode seasons. This is six episode seasons. Uh, it's on Hulu, by the way. And uh, it's it's just great. 
not really like an overall plot. Each season kind of has its own arc, but it's just about several groups of people in a in a small town in Canada. And uh, it's really funny. It's a great binge watch. It's like the most bingeable show ever. Uh, so season 11 just came out. So what they do ever since I think season like six or seven, they drop two sets of six episodes a year. And one of them is at uh, the end of the year. And so one of them's in like summer. So they just dropped six episodes on Christmas Day, I think. And then they will release like an episode like as a holiday special throughout the year. Um, so like this year they did uh, International Women's Day. They just dropped an episode on International Women's Day. So um, it's a great show. It, it hasn't been running that long. But again, you know, you do your you do two seasons a year and then that'll catch up pretty quick. So it's great. It's a very consistent show. Yeah, just really funny. I love it. If you're looking for a new binge, Letter Kenny all the way. Have you seen it? I've heard of it. I've not watched uh, yet. Now I have a recommendation from you. So there you go. I have no reason to now because there's no second uh, season of uh, 1899. <laughs> we'll replace that with Letter Kenny. Yeah, wildly <laughs> different shows, I'm sure. Um, but yeah. Well, that'll do it for this week. Uh, thanks again to Daniel for hanging out. Thanks for having me. Of course. I've, uh, I've appreciated having you on these these three times and uh look forward to seeing having you on listening to you in season four that'll be a fun change of pace uh and then you can follow me on twitter or letterboxd at schweit castle um if you have feedback on the show we're still taking that or if you have like uh suggestions on what you want to see from season four um some things that you like that i did that you'd like to see come back or some things that you um didn't like that i did that you would like to see go away um, all that is useful information for us. You can send that to BTS at cinemasins.com or DM the BTS Twitter at cinemasins BTS. Lastly, don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you're listening from and come on back next Thursday for more behind the sins content. Thanks for listening. Send any feedback to BTS at cinemasins.com and be sure to subscribe, rate, and comment. Find more ways to connect by visiting cinemasins.com slash BTS. This just feels so underwhelming, but like <laughs> there's still plenty of good stuff here, you know, like I'm sorry, Aaron. <laughs> no, 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 no. I have one fun um, chugging story, and that is that I went on vacation with some friends and we as it was vacation and we were some young 20s guys went to Walmart and bought a lot of alcohol for our week long vacation in Florida. And um, I had grabbed a bottle or two of wine because um, I like wine, not as much as Jeremy. And, uh, and, and I pulled it out. My friend said, what are you doing? Uh, like, why did you grab that? And I was like, well, I don't really feel like chugging right now or anything. I, like, I feel like this is kind of what I'm in the mood for. And he, he's like, well, chug it. And I said, well, you don't chug wine. He said, well, you won't. And look, when you, if you tell me not to do something, I'm just going to do it. So I think I got about halfway down the bottle and, um, then we played Mario Kart. <laughs> it was a fun night. <laughs> Mistakes of youth. <laughs> yeah because like, look i don't know if you've ever tried to play mario kart after you drink half a bottle of wine but i'm just saying if you if you don't have anything to do this weekend there's certainly like worse ways to spend your weekend <laughs> okay okay <laughs> I uh, anything make else? A note of that <laughs> anything put else? It in my calendar <laughs> uh have you seen this movie jonathan no you're not jonathan <laughs> have you seen this movie daniel